Hi there. Uh, in this tutorial, we will talk about using functions to create curves, surfaces, and shapes in three dimensions. Um, this builds on the other way of creating 3D objects that we learned in the previous tutorial. Um, so the first thing we'll talk about is curves. Um, so let's say we wanted to make some 3D curves in space. So um, what that looks like is that looks like a function that goes from R1 to R3. So uh, you can think of these as functions of time, where as time changes, your curve moves throughout space, and it sweeps out a curve in XYZ space. Um, we're going to use, just like we use parametric plot in tutorials before, um, Today, we're going to talk about parametric plot 3D. And so let's take a look at this. Here's an example. Let's look at a, a curve that's defined in this way. The x-coordinate moves as a function of time in this way, where it moves as sine of t. Uh, the y-coordinate moves as sine of 2t so twice as fast, and z of t, the z coordinate, moves as sine of 3t. So if we just looked at those each individually, this is what the x coordinate does from 0 to 2 pi, this is what the y coordinate does from 0 to 2 pi, and this is what the z coordinate does from 0 to 2 pi. And if we put those together and we create a curve that has this as the x coordinate, this as the y coordinate, this as the z coordinate, then what we get is we get this curve that's pretty fascinating, right? We would expect this curve to be bounded by negative one to one in each of the coordinates because the range of the sine function is zero to one. Um, and it bounces back and forth uh, in each of the different directions. Um, so this again is a one dimensional object located in three space but if we wanted to maybe print one of these, 3D print one of these, we need to give it some thickness. So to give it some thickness, we, we use this, this technique where we change the plot style. Instead of normally when we think of plot style, what it does is it adds some color or other characteristics to your graph. But in this instance, what we're doing is we're, we're using tube as a um, as the option for plot style. And so when we do that, when we set plot style to be equal to a, a tube, then that gives us some thickness and we would then be able to export and 3D print this curve. And by changing what the thickness is, you get different thicknesses of your curve. Uh, you can also decide to add some color to the plot style by including that in a list. All right, so um, another type of curve or, or, or another type of object that you might be used to when you're dealing with three-dimensional graphs is when you have a function like z equals sine of x plus y squared. So this is a function from of two variables, but with x and y, we let x and y change. And based on those, you get a value z. All right, so when we do that, we get this surface. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, when you take, if you, if you think about it, this surface doesn't have any thickness to it. Now, um, if you wanted to print this out and to have it and hold it and be able to feel what the surface feels like, um, you'd have to make it into three dimensions. And the way we can do that is we can use a secret option uh, in Mathematica called extrusion. And what it does is it creates a, at every point, it um, goes out in a direction normal to that point by a certain distance. So uh, I think this is secret because this can have some really weird behavior um, if the curve is not well, well 
behaved. Uh, but I think it's a really nice way that if you, once we've done this to our curve, uh, to our surface, excuse me, then we can now export this and print it out. And you'll have it in your hand. Um, a related concept is the idea of the contour plot. Um, a contour plot is, is giving us a set of points that satisfy an equation. And so in this instance, there's x is not a function of y and z. They're all the, it's only implicitly a function of y and z. And so uh, this same option can be used to thicken up the, um, the, the surface. All right, so now let's talk about a type of surface that uh, is less thought of when you're dealing with higher with in, in three dimensions. And that's the idea of a par parametrized surface. Now, a parametrized surface is one where we have a function from R2 to R3. So let's look at, at a, a classic example, uh, and that is a torus. So let me draw, take this out. So this is a torus. Um, this is actually, and, and we're only looking at the surface of this object. We're not looking at this as a, as a, a hole, uh, as, a, um, as a solid. We're just looking at the surface here. And the basic idea is that on this surface, there's two directions. There's the direction around the, uh, through, through the center of our torus, and then there's the direction that goes around the torus. And so um, what we have here is we can write down a set of equations that using those two variables, the one that goes around this way, and the one that goes around this way, that then trend, uh, we can we can write down some equations that write down what x, y, and z are as a function of these two variables u and v. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that I got those uh, the correct ones, uh, but when you place all values of u and all values of v, then that uh, traces out the whole torus. And I've colored it to look like a donut. Looks delicious. Um, so another thing you can do is, let's say we'd like to talk about a closed region that's defined by some inequalities or by some conditions then just like we def we used region plot before we can use region plot 3d to figure out uh, the intersection of two objects so here's an example what's the region inside two spheres so here's our two spheres and what we'd like to know is what can we just create the region that's in between these two spheres so we've got it's kind of like a three-dimensional venn diagram here uh, so how can we do that? Well, let's create a region that is this sphere, this red sphere. Well, the, the points in that red sphere are all points of the form x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 1. So the center here is 0, 0, 0. The distance is 1. In the blue sphere, we've now moved one unit in the x direction. And so the, the, but it has the same radius. So the equation of the blue sphere would be x minus one squared plus y squared plus z squared, all less than or equal to one. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to use region plot 3D to find all points that satisfy the first inequality and that satisfy the second inequality. And so when we do that, we can see here is that um, that squished region. It looks like a squished sphere, but it's the intersection of the two spheres. Uh, if we want to give it better resolution, we can change this. We can increase the number of plot points, 
and that takes a longer time to compute, but you can see that it's looking even uh, cleaner and crisper. And we can put those together with the sphere, and you can really see how that region is indeed the intersection of those two, two, uh, uh, two objects. So um, you can also use this region plot 3D to create um, objects that have interesting surfaces. So um, consider this object here. Here we have, we're taking the um, uh, paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared, and we're taking everything that's below it. And so what we've created here is basically a function block. It has the shape of the this function on the top, and uh, we're taking all the points that are underneath it. Right, so um, what we could do is we could set this up to be have that same function on both sides. Um, and let's just make our z function go to the same negative value below. And then what you get is you get this, the, 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 the bounding paraboloid on the top and the bounding paraboloid on the bottom. Right, and so this is a way that you can create a um, a, a a 3D printable graph of a, a function of two variables. Here's one more example. Here we see the bumpy region that is z is equal to sine of x plus sine of y. Um, I'm using a special uh, option here, box ratios automatic, and what that does is, in, is it ensures that the length of one unit in each of the dimensions is the same. If you don't put that in there, then you Mathematica is chooses for you what the dimensions are, and sometimes it distorts it more than you would expect. All right, last thing for today is that just like uh, when we talked about B-spline curves, uh, we can talk about B-spline surfaces. And so what a B-spline surface is, is we get a bunch of control points, uh, and we're trying to find a surface that uh, is, is a nice smooth surface that is uh, related to those control points. And here I've just chosen some random points, and so each time you run this you get a different you get a different surface that comes up. Um, and there was a really cool Wolfram demonstration which lets you take this and given given the points here you can change the dimensions of the points, the, the dimensions of the spline, and get a, a different uh, looking car. You can change the color, and so different um, different um, different uh, variables, different um, degrees of splineness give different shaped cars. All right, so that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching.